Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel, everybody. Lanny Burt, you know us by now, the Dividend Diplomats. Today, we're going to talk to you about two high-yielding, undervalued dividend stocks. But the question is, are we buying them? Stay tuned, everybody. We are going to answer that very question in this video today. Stay tuned, the cliffhanger, but you know what else is the cliffhanger? Smashing that subscribe button, give Bert and I a nice thumbs up. We've got two stocks. One's a dividend aristocrat. One has begun resuming dividend increases um, over the last you know year or so. So we'll have to dive in, check out these two stocks that are both yielding well over 4%. So all you passive income investors out there, one's almost 5%. One's almost four and a half percent. So definitely paying you right now during these high inflationary times. The name of the game is investing in undervalued dividend stocks to grow that passive income. Everybody, we're trying to reach financial freedom by building this passive income stream that grows over time. That is what we do. That's what we are always doing. We're always looking for undervalued stocks. So that's why in today's video, we're going to talk about these two companies we're going to review any recent news that's come out about them. And we're going to run them through the famous Dividend Diplomats Dividend Stock Screener. Lanny, you want to tell us the metrics of our stock screener? We're going to focus on those three metrics, guys. That price to earnings ratio less than the S&P 500. That dividend payout ratio preferably less than 60%. That perfect spot is 40 to 60%. Dividend growth rate. We need a history of growing dividends. And then we'll look at the dividend yield, seeing how much income this dividend stock will pay you just by owning it. That's right. So we're talking with closed prices as of Tuesday, November 22nd, 2022, week of Thanksgiving. So everybody, let's enjoy. Get that stuffing, get the mashed potatoes, get the turkey, get the gravy. Just keep eating and keep watching to see what we think about these two stocks. Let's jump right in. Stock number one. Hulk Hogan made this one famous back in the 80s when he came out with the leg drop. This company is Leggett and Plot, ticker symbol L E G. This company, we've been, we've owned this company for a long time, Lanny. Hasn't been the best long performer. Time. Has not been the best performer. But remember, this is still a dividend aristocrat, everybody. And a dividend aristocrat is a company that has increased its dividend for 25 plus consecutive years. Look at and plot is down 13% year to date, 17% over the last 52 weeks. Their current share price is 3567. But recently they've had a pretty up down, I should say down and then up um October, October and November. What was the big news that dropped towards the beginning of October for leg? The big leg drop that leg and plot just, you know, threw down on the mat here was that they reduced their guidance. Um, back in October during that earnings release. And then the market obviously punished the stock. You know, they were expecting about $5.2 to $5.4 billion in revenue. And then they reduced that forecast down to 5.1 to 5.2. So essentially cut it down about a hundred million on the short side, but 200 you know, million up on the you know top side on the max range. And then not only that, but the earnings per share um, they did reduce that downward um, from 265 to 280 um, as the range down to $2.30 to 245. So tightened it down, you know, quite a bit when you actually, you know, take a step back, 35 cents per share on either end of the range. Obviously, your share price typically is a product of a multiple on earnings. So when you do that, your share price will drop. Yeah. And I think the interesting thing is the stock price has come rallying back a little bit, which I think is kind of funny because we'll get in plat did announce earnings after they announced revenue of 1.29 billion earnings per share of 52 cents. This was after they lowered the guidance and everyone was talking about how it met the expectations of the market. So the it price back, which I thought was kind of funny because it's a week and a half before or however many weeks it was before they're saying, oh, results are going to be down. We need to lower that guidance. And they're like, hey, we met the guidance two weeks later, and then the stock price returned back. So I just think it's kind of funny seeing how it works. Overall, though, 
no matter what's happening with the noise about guidance, about their earnings release. That is why we run them through our screener to see what the metrics are looking like. We let the numbers tell us the story to see if we want to invest in Leggett and Plot. So let's run through the screener. Let's kick it off with that first metric, the price to earnings ratio. Their price was 35.67, as I said. We're going to use the low end of that EPS range of $2.30 for this analysis. That's a PE ratio of 15.51. Yeah, fairly inexpensive. You know, the market's around that 20 to 21 times earnings right now. So 15.5 definitely showing signs of undervaluation. But let's look at the dividend payout ratio. Again, analysts are expecting $1.76 on leg. Um, and that calculates out to a 76.5% dividend payout ratio. So it's over the max threshold of 60%. And definitely on the high side right now, Bert. Yeah. And if you look at if you just have some fun with it, you put $2.45 in there in the high end of their new EPS range. That still keeps the payout ratio above 70% at 71.84%. So to your point, it's high. Let's look at the next metric. Their five-year dividend growth rate is about 4%, and they've increased that dividend for 28 plus consecutive years. So aristocrat, slower dividend growth, and quite frankly, lowering guidance, higher payout ratio. I'm not expecting them to blow this average dividend income out of the water anytime soon. Yeah, guys, this could be a, a low dividend growth stock for a couple of years to come until supply chain and costs kind of get under control here. I feel like Leg and Plot really have battled over the last three years with the pandemic and now with this era that we're in. Um, so definitely going forward, I could expect lower dividend growth. But let's look at that dividend yield here, 4.93%. So essentially almost 5% yield on this stock. So every $100, you'll get $5 in a dividend back to you. Um, for the most part, again, stock is actually down 13.5% this year. Or 17% in the last 52 weeks. So it actually hasn't been punished as much as you would expect um, given the guidance reduction. So yeah. pretty interesting. Yeah. So just to summarize, 14.56 PE ratio, 76% payout ratio, low dividend growth with a five-year average of 4%, dividend aristocrat with a higher dividend yield. We'll hold our conclusions, our thoughts about we'll get in plot until after we announce this second company. So let's transition. That second company we're about to look at today, Dominion, ticker symbol D. You want to talk about some noise, Lanny? Um, noise, making noise in the industry right now. I mean, they made noise two and a half years ago when Warren Buffett bought out part of their business model, which then right-sized or reduced Dominion's dividend. This was like right at the beginning, early parts of the pandemic, kind of. It was chaos. Kind of was a, yeah. Yeah, it, was, it felt like it was the most anti Warren Buffett move because you had no idea what was happening with the company. They're trying to figure it out. And then just out of nowhere, you just got this surprise dividend cut. It just none of it really felt like it added up. So but we've held on to our positions for them since. Yeah. And I mean, I know management and CEO, they're like, hey, we haven't been doing well. We get it. <laughs> we see it. We know it. And now it's time to completely you know, change up our business, our divisions. It's time to relook at everything, cut costs and be yep. leaner, be more efficient. Yep. And that's what I think was funny. They still showed increases in revenue. They still showed some other positive items. They still showed pretty um, narrowing guidance. So the range of what they were expecting guys came down, but it wasn't like a wholesale cut like some of the other companies were seeing. But I just think it's your, you mentioned it, Lanny. Really, the CEO just said they're not happy. It's okay. That happens with companies. They're going to work forward to do it. But it has been painful for shareholders along the way. They're down 23% year to date, down 19.47% over the last 52 weeks. So yeah, it hasn't been great in Dominion's headquarters. Exactly. And guys, the stock price is down about 23% this year. They actually have just recently been pummeled pretty hard. Um, if you actually look at the stock chart, from Dominion, you know, if you actually just go to the last, I don't know, one month or down eight to nine percent in one month, you know, once trading close to 70, now they're trading at about $60 a share, $60 and 25 cents actually. Um, so, really, we're going to put them through the screener, see what these metrics look like for Dominion. Again, keep in mind that they did have a dividend reduction in 2020, 
which leaves a little bit of a bad taste from uh from a dividend growth standpoint yeah they definitely burn that turkey because we're not overly thrilled to hear about that let's look at it the price earnings ratio price six dollars and 25 cents divide that by 403 the low end of management's new guidance um that's a pe ratio of 14.95 so again slight discount similar to what we thought about leg let's look at that payout ratio and you want to tell us about that yeah, well, let's look at the payout ratio. And again, guys, one of the reasons why we even bought the stock, Roberto owns it and I own it, is because we pay them every month for our natural gas, guys, for our gas bill. We get it from Dominion. They're our you know, servicer for our gas meters. Actually, they were supposed to look at my meter. Uh, I was not home, so I definitely missed their visit. I'm they staring at mine in my basement right there. It's right on the other side of the screen. I see their gas meter right there. But yeah, let's look at the payout ratio again. You know, they pay an annual dividend of approximately $2.67 spread over four quarters. So when you take that over the low end of the guidance of $4.03, you're ending up at a 66% dividend payout ratio. So again, another dividend stock that's north of that 60% mark. Yeah. Dividend history, we talked about it. They cut their dividend. They've increased it once since then, but there's obviously no record of recent div- dividend growth after the cut was just one. So there's not much to really say about it. Looking at the yield though, their dividend yields 4.43%. So it's not bad. You're at least getting paid. They're, it's a nice premium. You're getting paid, but. You know, you're, you're definitely getting paid. Utilities typically, you know, you want them to be higher. They've actually performed very well this year simply because it's a recession proof stock because people need heat, people need cool, uh, cool down. So, you know, again, it's a, a fairly solid stock during this time period. Uh, we should be anticipating a dividend increase at some point, um, you know, in the next few months. I don't know, Bert, if you took a look at that. Yeah, I think it was what, Q1 is when the dividend increase should come, potentially. It should come in, yeah, January, maybe. Yeah, we'll see. They've only had one piece to look after, so who who knows? And keep in mind that last dividend increase, um, you know, went from sixty three cents to sixty six point seven five. So when you do the math there, that was a nice six percent dividend increase. So, mm-hmm. hey, you never know. Dominion continues to reshape their business. You know, you might see you know somewhere in that five to seven percent range of an increase. So let's summarize it. PE 14.95, payout 66%, one year increase. That last one was 6%, as you just highlighted there, with a yield of 4.43%. So where do we stand here? What are we thinking? You know, um, it's frustrating because you know, I look at these two stocks almost all the time because it's like in this time period when you can get a risk-free rate, everybody for over 3% elsewhere. You kind of want to get a little bit higher of a dividend yield um, just because that's where the market's at. But I just can't seem to find myself buying more shares of either of the two stocks right now for me personally, Bert, and the community, Mm -hmm. um, simply because payout ratios are high. And this should be a time where you're buying maybe better quality stocks at above a 3% yield. That's kind of where Mm -hmm. I'm at with it. Yeah, and that's where I look at a company like, of the two, if I were to pick one, I'd go get and plot because they have that dividend aristocrat history. This isn't their first time increasing through bad times. It's not the best right now, but the the best companies that have the long-term dividend history know how to continue to increase, hold down the fort to keep that streak to reward shareholders later. I mean, that's the thing with Dominion. There are plenty of other utility companies out there that have better balance sheets that aren't dealing with some of the business issues that Dominion's dealing with that have longer term histories. So I think I'm going to personally pass on Dominion for now. If I'm going to, we'll get in plot might be a candidate for my weekly purchases after Johnson and Johnson or something along those lines. We'll see what the market holds. So everybody let us know what you think of these two companies. Are you buying Leggett and Platt? Are you buying Dominion? Are you buying Charizards? Are you buying Pokemon cards? You just got to let us know here in that comment section below. And guys, guys, I'm laughing right now just simply because it's frustrating in this market. It just is because there's high quality stocks 
There is the risk-free rate on your high-yield savings accounts at Ally, SoFi, Marcus, Capital One, you name it, over 3%. Money markets elsewhere at 33 to 3.75%. So I get it. You want to be able to buy a growing dividend income stream that's going to pay you dividends now and grow consistently. Stocks right now are going through a tough spot, you know, Leggett and Platt, you know, and hopefully they're kind of like Medtronic that where they just released like, hey, we're going to have a better second half. So maybe Leggett and Platt turns it around mm -hmm. to finish off the year and has a better start to the next year. They're like, look really far into the future. <laughs> look as far as you can. That's where we need to go to see those metrics. So. No, but let us know if you've been yeah. buying Leggett and Plot or Dominion. Let us know if you're like turning off the noise, buying dividend stocks, adding to that passive income because, hey, you have a goal of adding to an income stream that grows without you having to do anything and to help you on that journey to financial freedom. Also, let us know what other stocks you want us to look at too. We're always looking for suggestions. Everybody, thanks for your support that we've had so far. It's great. We're going to keep finding undervalued stocks to buy. That's the name of the game. Lanny, you want to send these suckers out of here? That was Bert the Herd and Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats. Over and out.